I know God is so good. And you got you got a whole week ahead of yourself. That you got a, let me just tell you, every night this week, you got an opportunity to be in the house of God. And you got an opportunity on Sundays to be in the house of God twice. Amen. For these people tonight, this morning that don't like church, how are you going to like heaven? Amen. They can't take worship here. How can they take worship there? I've always told, I've got, I used to have a little saying up on the bulletin board down in Robbinsville that say, made this statement. If your faith is not strong enough to get you to church, then it's not strong enough to get you to heaven. I, I believe there's some merit into that right there. You know what I'm talking about this morning. But that's not what I'm going to talk about this morning. And we know we got every night this week and twice on Sunday to have be an opportunity to be in the house of God. But what I want to talk to you about this morning is becoming a house of prayer. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew 21 and verse 13 right here. Jesus made this statement during after the cleansing of the temple. Prayer, mo, prayer is the heartbeat of the church. A church without prayer is a body without a spirit this morning. The church don't pray, it needs to cease to be. Because it's nothing more than a social gathering this morning. Amen. If a people, and when I'm, we're going to get here in a little bit, but I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the body. I'm talking about this temple this morning. How Christ wants us to be a house of prayer. Listen to these words in Matthew 21 and 13. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer. But you have made it, a den of thieves. Again, and he said unto them, who said it? Jesus said this. It is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Right there, Jesus tells us the purpose, and he also tells us what it's been turned into. He gives us purpose, but he also tells us what man's turned it into, a den of thieves, when the purpose of the house of God should be a house of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord, and we lift you up, dear God, today, Father. Lord, we just exalt you this morning, Lord, and we give you glory, God, and we give you praise. And we give you honor, dear God, today, Lord, and we ask for your anointing and we ask for your spirit, dear God, today, Father. Lord, we pray for your hand to be upon this revival, this service, and each service this week. That the anointing of flow, your spirit will move, O oh God, today, Father, Lord. Lord, we give you glory, God, and we give you praise, and we give you honor today, Lord, and we lift you up. We ask for your blessings once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. E.M. Bounds said, prayer affects places, times, occasions, and circumstances. Prayer has to do with God and with everything that is related to God. Prayer is always proper in the house of God. But when prayer becomes a stranger, there it ceases to be a house of God. In this passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 21, it seems that prayer had ceased in the temple. And now the temple was nothing more than just a flea market type of atmosphere or a business type of atmosphere. In today's terms, many have made it a social gathering, a place where people will come for everything but to real purpose. As much as babies are cute, the church is not a place we come to play with the kids. Amen? But the church is a place that we come to get in tune with God. The church is a place that is supposed to be the house of God. And let me tell you, as long as this temple right here, 
as long as the temple was not praying, there was nothing that was going on there. It was ceasing to not be the purpose that the Lord had intended the temple to be at this point. We're going to move a little bit right here. Jesus said it is written, meaning it had been written before time that the house of God should be a house of prayer. In fact, we can look at Isaiah 56 and 7. He said, even then will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for mine shall be called a house of prayer. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 11, is this the house which is called by my name? Become a den of robbers in your eyes. Behold, even I have seen it, said the Lord. What it begins to tell me there is Christ has a purpose. That Christ has a purpose for the body of Christ this morning. And that is to be a house of prayer. You see right here in this scripture, we see Jesus give a purpose. We see Jesus give a purpose for the church. And let me just establish real quick that I'm not talking like the temple of old where God dwells. But now that we are under the New Testament, that God dwells in us. And that we are that temple this morning. And we are that one that Christ expects to be the house of prayer. How do you know? You see, because 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17 says, Know you not that you are the temple of God, that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. And if any man defile the temple of God, him himself shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? In 1 Corinthians 12 and 27, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Some of you are saying this morning, what are you saying? What I am trying to tell the church, the Houston Town Church of God, those that are sitting under my voice this morning, that every spirit-filled believer this morning should be the house of prayer this morning. What I'm trying to tell you this morning, uh, that the body of Christ uh, should get concerned with prayer this morning. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you this morning, uh, that the body, the temple of God, uh, should be about the purpose of Jesus Christ uh, and not the purpose of the world, uh, not the purpose of what we want, uh, not the purpose of the flesh, uh, but the purpose of God. Uh, you see, I constantly hear, uh, I want to see the whole Holy Spirit move. I want to see God great miracles take place. I want to see God deliver people. I want to see God do this and that. I ask you this morning, how many want to see God do those great things this morning? How many want to see God do those great things this morning? People say, I want to see God do things in my life. Anybody in here want to see God do things in their life? How many in here want to see miracles? from God. How many in here want to see people delivered this morning? How many in here want to see people's bondages broke this morning? But I ask you this morning, have you become the house of prayer? Because I'm telling you without the miracles, of, without praying, you will not see the miracles of God. Without prayer, you will not see yokes broken. Without prayer, you won't see people delivered. Without prayer, you won't see these great moves of God. You see, I'm telling you this morning, people don't want to pay the price to see the miracles of God. Everybody that wants to see God move, if they would just pray, I'm telling you, the church could see a move of God. If people would become the house of prayer and become serious about their prayer life and become serious about getting down to business with God. I have, I am convinced this morning that you will see a move of God when the body of Christ becomes the house of prayer again. Did you hear me? 
We talk about these great miracles. We see these great miracles. I know you may not shout during these messages this week, but I'm telling you this is what God has brought to me to bring to this church, to become the house of prayer again, to become the house of prayer. If you want to see the lame, you want to see the blind come in and where he healed them, then the church must become the house of prayer. If you want to see bondages broken, you must become the house of prayer. But I'm going to tell you right now, many in the body of Christ don't want to pray no more. We want everybody else to pray for us, but they don't want to pray for themselves. They don't want to get down and get on their knees before God. We want a convenient store Christianity that don't require prayer. Let me tell you this morning, prayer requires some things. Prayer is hard work. Prayer means putting yourself down before God and meaning business with God. My Lord, today can God do the great miracles? Can God send revival around here? Can God revive those that are backslidden and lukewarm? Yes, if the church will get down and begin to pray. Can God deliver people out of bondages? My Lord, I look at Abraham this morning. Here was a man who prayed before God. Here was a man who was in intercessory prayer. Here was a man that stood in before his nephew Lot. And let me tell you, God honored his prayer. There was never an altar inside of Sodom. The altar was always outside of Sodom. What am I trying to tell you uh, the body of Christ is the altar uh, for this world today did you hear me uh, there's not an altar to God in the world but it has to be those that are on the outside of the world uh, it's got to be the church uh, it's got to be the body of Christ uh, that becomes a house of prayer let me tell you this morning every great move of God every miracle has always been accomplished by prayer. Jesus prayed. How many know he, before he raised Lazarus, he said, Father, I thank you for hearing my prayer. He prayed. He showed the importance of prayer. He showed what our lives should be, a house of prayer. You see, without prayer, nothing will happen, but we will become like this temple. Just doing business as usual. And I'm afraid that is what has took place today. I'm afraid that is what has taken place in our Pentecostal churches. I remember a time in the Pentecostal circles in the church of God. They used to call us holy rollers. That's all right, but they, when they needed prayer, the first one they come to was the holy roller, the tongue talker. They used to... Hate us, that's all right. I don't look to be popular around here. If you hate me, let me tell you, I want to shake their hand because it tells me that I'm getting under their skin a little bit. <laughs> Did you hear me? I don't look to be popular around here. But I look, I've always said I'll either start a revival or I'll start a riot around here. One of the two is going to take place like Paul. But let me tell you, but let, they used to not like the Pentecostals. Because, but let me tell you, they knew the Pentecostals could get a prayer through to God. Like I told you before, mom and them ladies down there, Aaron Station, they told you they were praying for you. My Lord, you might as well get ready for the bite because they were going to latch on like a pit bull. You know how a pit bull's got its jaws and he won't let go? That's when they said they were praying for you, they were latching on like a pit bulldog. That means they weren't going to stop until they saw they lacked their jaws inside of you and their teeth. They were going to move God on your behalf to get with you. My Lord, what has happened to the prayer like that? What has happened to the body of Christ like that? In fact, today many want to just come in and just go uh, as business as usual. Um, even in our Pentecostal circles today, uh, prayer has been neglected. Uh, they're wanting to just go on, just do our little motions and go through it. Uh, have a little religious action and go through it. Uh, but I've come by to tell the Houston Town Church of God, uh, I want more than just religious movement. Um, I want a move of God this morning. Uh, I want more than just, a mo just to go through the routines. Uh, 
You want more than just to go through the motions. Uh, my Lord, anybody in here want to see a move of God? Uh, my Lord, you want to see the outpouring of the Spirit? Uh, you want to see deliverance in what me tell you? Uh, the church must become uh, the house of prayer again. Uh, and not a den of robbers. Uh, not a den of thieves. Uh, not just coming through here to go through everyday living uh, and get our time over and get out. Uh, we must become Come serious and become the purpose that Jesus told us to become the house of prayer. See, right here in Matthew 21, there were no healing, there were no miracles going on until Jesus cleansed it and it became the house of prayer. Did you see that? There was nothing that was going on. Until it was cleansed. Until the house of God was put in order. How many know judgment begins in the house of God? What it means is judgment begins with you. Let me tell you, that's what Jesus was doing right here. You can read in John's account when he cleansed it again. That he took a whip and he made it to whip them. That was in the table. That was in there. That wasn't just uh, out of the moment. It took time. It was, he knew what he was going to do. He premeditated the cleansing because it was not doing what it wanted to do. Either we get the church in order, get yourself in order, or God will get you in order this morning. How many know that this morning? Because Christ wants us to see, be that house of prayer. But because it is a den of robbers, and many don't know its true spiritual purpose this morning, they're in here trying to play with the babies more than they're looking at the things of God. They're in here trying to just snack on foods and stuff like that. Like I told you before, adults, we shouldn't be bringing food in the house. This ain't your of God. This ain't a coffee shack. But we're wanting to play. People have their phones out playing on their Facebooks and stuff like that. My Lord, it's like you're turning the house of God into a den of thieves. Amen? You're turning the house of God into a den of thieves. My Lord, you ain't coming in here looking for its true spiritual purpose. Some just come for a social gathering to see who they could see. My Lord, it's nothing but a den of robbers in. And we want to know where the power is at. We want to know why the church seems lifeless and powerless. When the body of Christ becomes a house of prayer, the house of God will become a divine sanctuary. But yet I'm afraid many have turned it in of becoming a divine sanctuary. The church has become a body without a spirit. Did you hear me? It's a dead, inanimate thing. Why does that happen? Because prayer is neglected. This is what happens when people become neglected. When prayer becomes unfamiliar exercise, then God becomes a stranger in the church world, in the body of Christ. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? You get that statement again. When prayer is a stranger to you, then God, when prayer is neglected by somebody, then God becomes a stranger in their life. Churches that don't pray don't expect God to show up. Did you hear me? Preachers that don't pray don't need to expect God to anoint their message and show up. My Lord, body of Christ, if you don't pray and don't mean business with God, how do you expect God to show up on your behalf? I'll tell you what's become today. We've turned it into a den of thieves. The reason people ain't experiencing God because God's become a stranger in his own house. God has been put out. It's interesting when you study the seven churches of Revelation. You see him at the beginning of those seven churches walking in the midst of them. But at the very last church, he's not in the midst of them in Laodicea. 
In fact, he's on the outside of the church. My Lord, I wonder sometimes if he ain't on the outside trying to get in because we've neglected our prayer life. We've not become the house of God like God has ever intended us to become. Oh, I know you're not a shouting this morning, but I'm telling you, people want to experience God, but they cannot experience God without being prayer, without being the house of prayer. You study those saints of God God used beforehand. You study the Smiggles, Wigglesworth. You study the Lester Summerall's. You study the great men of God. Let me tell you one thing you'll find out. They were houses of prayer. They were committed to praying. I can't remember which one was it. Maybe it was Spurgeon. I don't know. But I remember reading one off my mind. Set that would spend hours upon hours in, some, in prayer. And they said, why are you praying so much? Because he said, because there are people that are perishing. I can't neglect it. He'd be up to the wee hours of the morning praying. He'd get up from bed and get up, go to bed, and he'd get back up for praying and into the Word of God. Maybe it was Spurgeon I'm thinking about or someone else. But anyway, it's a lesson right here. When you begin to study those that God used mightily, they were committed to prayer. Churches that are going somewhere. Churches that are moving. Churches that are growing. Churches that are seeing the Spirit move are churches that are committed to prayer. Not worried about someone else's opinion. Not worried about what the neighbors think. Not worried about what the religious community think. But they're serious with the move of God. Can I tell you today, but sadly, many in the body of Christ have become a flea market atmosphere. Instead of, being a, instead of being a house of God, there are some people that ain't nothing more than a three-ring circus. Hello? Am I preaching right to you this morning? What are you talking about? Because they ain't got no prayer life. They're nothing more than a circus. They don't, the devil don't fear somebody that don't pray. Did you hear me? Did you hear me? I said the devil don't fear nobody, something. Someone that don't pray. What do you mean in preaching? I'm telling you, if you ain't got a prayer life, he's just having a little heyday with you. You're just entertaining him. Exactly what it is. But a church that prays will put a devil to flight. Did you hear me? A church that will pray and get on its face before God and mean business before God will have a move of God. My Lord, this morning, can I tell you, we become, God has become unfamiliar to many. Where are you at, God? Why aren't you moving on my behalf, God? But I'll tell you why many times, God. Let me tell you what I found out the number one couple of problems is. First of all, some people don't have a prayer life like they should. Some people's got sin in their lives. Some people's got unforgiveness and bitterness in their lives. What I'm trying to tell you, the house of God must be in order. The house of God is, must be in order. We come to church not expecting to pray. We come to church trying to get our meals, get what we want, and get out the door. I told you this morning, the least time spent in this uh, uh, services is time in the altar. Let me just go ahead and announce this. There are some that will come around 5 o'clock each during the service times. I don't know which night of the week. The night at 5. Every night at 5. To pray for the services. How much time do you spend in prayer? Or has it become neglected? Do you pray at home? Amen. How many has got a prayer closet at home? Ask yourself that. You'll hear me. I don't know. Maybe tonight talk about broken down altars. One time people used to have a prayer closet. Now they've got a closet full of, <laughs> I don't know what all you could say in there. But listen, 
prayer's been neglected. And we want to know why God's not moving. We want to know where the great miracles are. Let me tell you, many have defiled the temple of God and turned it into a den of robbers. Prayer meetings are neglected, but socials are accepted and attended. Entertainment has replaced intercession. Did you hear me? Entertainment has replaced intercession. The body of Christ is more worried about fried chicken than they are touching heaven. The body of Christ of large have allowed other things to take the place of God. Some will wonder what we're going to have for dinner. You need to be worrying about what God's going to do. You don't need to be worrying about your neighbor. You need to be worrying about what God's going to do in your life. Did you hear me? You need to quit worrying about what's going on. The offshore, if you come. The dinner will be there when you get home. There's nothing more important than touching God. Sadly, the altar has been broken down. Many have neglected the latter. They brought in helpless and hopeless idols. Man has replaced the altar with self-help, ungodless things in this last day. We've defiled the temple of God. We've made things in our lives that should not be there. We've allowed things to take place and take precedence over God. Did you hear me? We've allowed things to take precedence over the walk of God inside of our lives. And if we're going to get to be the house of prayer, there's going to have to be some things that are overthrown in our lives. There's going to have to be some things that are cast out to become that which God has intended the church to become. In fact, you can go back and read in verse 12. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sought and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. Now let's listen to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 6, chapter 14, verse 14 through 18. Then 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And and what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. Then in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. He says, having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. What I'm trying to tell you this morning is the temple of God needs to be cleansed again. The temple of God needs to be cleaned. <laughs> And I'm not talking about this building. (laughs) Some people may think, well, preacher, you're talking about the building. I clean my house, talking about your regular house. I'm not talking about the house that you live in, like that parsonage over there. There's some that literally may think that. I'm talking about this body right here. I'm talking about this right here. I'm talking about this right here that we are in. This shell that we in. That's what I'm speaking of this morning. My Lord, people want to roll around and do the things they want to do. No one, and they don't want to commit themselves to prayer. They want to know why God ain't answers. Because they're full of filth. They're full of dirt. They're full of sin. And a church, a body like that can never be the house of God. Uh Uh-oh, I ain't getting no amens on that. 
people that like to spread gossip and bow out lies. You're not the house of God. You're the house of Satan. People that try to still go look for other people's husbands or wives. You're not the house of God. You're the house of Satan. People that are full of lust, ungodly lust. I'm talking not bad on you. You don't want to have control over it. You want it to let it run rampant over your life. The house of Satan. Let me tell you, the house of God must be cleansed in order for the church to be, the body to be what God had intended it to be. My Lord, I know this ain't preaching. This ain't preaching. To, I'm not, I hope you're some of you ready to run me down the road this morning. That's all right. I know where 81's at. Listen, you've got to become you got to let God, if you don't get it out of you, God will get it out of you. The problem is people don't want to get it out of them. They want to have their houses full of filth and yet be the temple of God that also. How many know Jesus said you can't serve two masters? You will cling to one or you will cling to other. You can't serve God and Satan both. Half-heartedness, I'll tell you this morning. You're not, if you ain't, he ain't got your whole heart, then he don't have your heart at all. My Lord, people don't pay no attention. People are looking around, this and that way. When I'm talking to them, you want to be what God's called you to be? You better get your house in order. Because if you don't cleanse it out, Jesus will cleanse it for you. Amen? They had opportunity. I believe they had an opportunity to get in order. They wouldn't. Jesus went in there and done it for them. He's going to overthrow some tables in your life. But I'll tell you again. Before there could be miracles that took place in their lives. There had to be some cleansing in the house. There had to be some things overthrown in the house. There had to be some things that were put in order in the house before the spiritually blind and the physically lame could be healed. My Lord, this morning can I tell you, there's got to be some things Overthrown in lies. Before you can be what God intended for it to be. The church. People are full of filth. Bitter and sweet cannot come from the same fountain. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, then the Lord will not hear me. And we want to know why there's a house of prayer, why the body is not becoming the house of prayer. Many have me allowed the altars to be torn down, and I'm going to hit it this morning. They've allowed the altars to be torn down in their life. You see what we've got? Now, we don't have the altars of spirituality. We've tore down the altars of spirituality and built the altars of carnality. We want to appraise the flesh and not the spirit. Did you hear me? But if you're going to be the house of prayer, you're going to have to build the altar, repair the altar of spirituality. What will happen when the church tears down the altar of carnality and repair the altar of God? Let me tell you what will happen. Let's go back into 1 Kings 18 in verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. It had to be there for it to be broken down. You know how it got broken down probably? Neglect. <laughs> Neglect. 
is what broken it down. He tell you, neglect is what's paring down many altars in many houses around here today. We've neglected our time with God. We've neglected getting along with God. But Elijah knew if he was going to confront the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, there was one thing that had to be rebuilt. And that was the altar of God. But yet, how many know if you're going to go somewhere with God, you've got to repair that altar? How many know that we're in dark times? We've got evilness that is attack coming against the things that stand for God in this land today. You don't believe it. You just look at everything that's going on. Things that are happening. You see evil in the spirit of Antichrist trying to attack the body of Christ. The things that stand for righteousness. You see the darkness that covers this land. And I ask you, there's enemies to the cross out there. There's enemies to the body of Christ out there. There's enemies to the things of the God out there. And they're sitting in the high position in this land. How many know that this morning? That's what Paul said. They're sitting in government offices. And if you don't believe me, you ain't been watching the news lately. Amen. Some of the things they're coming up with. Paul even said it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Darkness covers this land. Look around. Look at D.C. Look at our local. Look at our state office. And you tell me demonic spirits ain't behind it. I'll give you another nugget in every area. You, there's demons bound everywhere, but you can find strongholds in one area stronger than others. If I would have mentioned San Francisco, California, what would you think? Homosexuality. It's got a stronghold out there. Then you can go in certain areas where alcoholism runs rampant. Let me tell you, there's only one way that we can eradicate that, and that is to stand in the altar of God. But we also must proclaim the word of God. But they must start with an altar. The altar of God must be repaired. We must take authority over these things in prayer and in fasting. We'll get there later on. In 1 Kings 18 and 38, let me tell you, Elijah repaired the altar of God. And let me tell you, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. That's when the fire fell, when the Lord of the Lord, when the altar of God was repaired. But I'm afraid many don't have no idea what it is for the fire to fall no more. Because the altar is in despair. The altar is broken down. The altar is torn down. Let me tell you, there's no altar. There's, broke, there's only there's in many houses anymore. There's, the many are broken down because of neglect. Because they don't want to have time with God. They got other things to do than to fall on their knees before God. My Lord, I ask you this morning, are we, are we the house of prayer when the altar of God's been broken down, not in the church also, uh, but in the home as well? I know I pick on this a lot, but I'm going to say it again. We spend more time on social media We spend more time on our telephones. We spend more time putting our face into this than we stand looking up towards heaven. You can't tell me the altar ain't been torn down. How much time does one spend before God? And people say, I can't even give him a few minutes a day. I can't give him a few minutes, but boy, I got the get on here and I got to type my little message here and then, then there's some that's got the snapchat I've never done that I don't want people sending me pictures <laughs> only pictures I get is my little girl most of the time. she's okay 
But they, they'll send these Snapchats. My Lord, I'd rather be talking to God than sending you a picture. Hey, man. I'm not saying it's sin. You know, it's going what kind of picture you send. But I'm not saying it's sin to do that. But here's the problem. Anything that takes precedent over God in your life becomes an idol. The altars got broken down because our society has trained us. They have trained us to be addicted to things, to be busy bodies, but never having time for God. The home altar is broken down. I remember a time that homes would have time before God. People would get into their closets and have a place where they got along with God. But sadly, most people today, the only time they get with God is the few minutes they get on Sunday morning, Sunday night, or Wednesday night. If you ain't got an altar at home, it needs to repair. You want to see the fire of God? You want to see the fire of God? You want to see the fire of God? Then repair the altar. Then repair the altar. Become the house of prayer that Christ has intended you to be. I'm going to leave you here challenged this morning. You can tell me how much you want to see God move, but if you ain't praying, you don't want to see God move. Ooh. If you don't have an altar in your home, you ain't praying, you don't want to see God move. Amen? You don't want to pay the price to see God move. Amen? You don't want to pay the price to see God move. Because you're going to have to turn off some things. You're going to have to get rid of some junk since I'm going to get a hold of God. Let me tell you, you go back to years ago. I'm going to just speak just for a few minutes. I'll close here in just a minute. But I'm going to tell you, years ago, when you didn't have this social media thing, we didn't have all this modern technology, and I thank God for modern technology. Some people say the good old days. Well, let me tell you, some of them may have been the good old days, but I sure do, in, I sure do appreciate indoor plumbing. Anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> But let me tell you, the days we didn't have the things that we did do now, no more people were more in tune with God. I believe Satan has done his best to use these things to distract people from becoming the house of prayer. Because if he gets a church of praying, he knows he's in danger. Does your altar need to prepare? Sister Mark, so you can get ready to come. We want to see the fire of God. But the altar must be built. It must be repaired this morning. Ask yourself, is the altar at my house in disrepair? Has prayer gone out at my house? And if it has, your altar is broken down. There's the altar is in need of repair. When there's no singing of the Lord's songs or the reading of the word in his home. The altar is in need of repair when there's no commitments, no vows renewed, and no sacrifice in the church. Their altar needs repaired when there's no testimonies of God's miracle working power. And no deep yearning and longing after God by his people were there. You know, we're in a falling away right now. I believe that. People are falling away. People neglect the things of God. I was just reading the other day, the church of God put a stat out. said people just ain't going to church no more. For whatever reason, they've been distracted. We're talking about church attendance. Is at an all-time low around the world. And I believe the problem as they've left their altar, become broken down. And I'm not just going to fault it on them. We've got churches that have removed completely altar services out of it. If it's not in the church, how's it going to be in the home? 
Amen. We was talking about people just don't come to church no more. They're doing this and they're doing that. And I said, we're in that time Jesus talked about right before his coming. It's discouraging. People don't come. But I looked at that and I said, boy, it just ain't, just ain't here. It's all around. They're talking about it's all around. People just ain't going. Talking about how many churches that close every year and the numbers would blow your mind because people ain't attending. And I believe it all has to go back till we're not a broken down, we are got a broken down altar and we're not the house of God that Jesus wanted us to be. Because we, repl- we brought entertainment in and took out intercession. We brought programs in and I like good programs, I like having fellowships, but it never replaces the altar. Amen? It never replaces the altar. It's sad where we're at. But I believe, I still believe there can be a revival in these last days. I still believe there can be a harvest. Amen? How do you know? Because Jesus ain't come yet. <laughs> Did you hear me? Jesus ain't come yet. means we still got time. That means there's still potential. That means there's still some in the field. But it has to go back to heaven and altar being a house of prayer. The altar needs repaired when our homes are unsanctified and our relationships in the church is purely emotional. Instead of being the house of prayer, many have turned it the house of God. into a club or a social gathering. What are you talking about? We ain't coming in here gathering together to worship. We're coming in here to see so-and-so. We come in here to see so and so. We ain't paying attention, a bit of attention, what the preacher says. People don't want to pay attention. How oh, we're people here for some people come to the house together with others just to turn it into a social gathering, nothing more than a den of thieves. I'm going to tell you, you, I may make you mad by this. I may preach you glad. I may preach you mad. Brother Harold, I'll preach them mad, you'll preach them glad. (laughs) But I'm telling you right now, if you're here just for a social gathering or any other reason not to come into the presence of God, you've turned his house into a den of thieves. Am I right on that? You're here for any other purpose than to worship Christ and to gather in his name. You've turned the house of God into a den of thieves. My Lord, help us. What God wants us to be a house of prayer, not a social gathering, not a meet and greet, not I come to see this wonderful preacher that we got. I don't know if I'd put wonderful there or not. No, we don't come for that. We come together into the house, together before him in worship. We gather to come before him today. You can stand in here this morning. I ask you, how can one be the house of God prayer when the altar is broken down? Jesus made it clear. Jesus made it clear. That his house shall be a house of prayer. But very little praying is going on. I'm telling you. God is calling his church for this hour. In this time. He's calling the church back to prayer. 
He's calling the body of Christ to prayer. I asked you how many will be the house of prayer this morning. How many will step out and say, I'm coming to this altar. I'm going to commit to be in the house of prayer, not a den of thieves. The more you pray, I'm convinced the more you'll experience God. The more you seek after God, the more you'll experience Him this morning. Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise this morning. We give you honor this morning. We exalt you this morning. Lord, we ask you, God, just to touch. Touch everyone in here, Lord. Let us commit ourselves to becoming the house of prayer. Lord, don't let us become a den of robbers. Lord, don't let us become that den of thieves, Lord. Lord, let us repair the altar. Let us rebuild the altar. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.